let's go ahead and get started. Our goal this time is to create a list, or sorry, we have a list. We want to create a detail screen off of the to-do list we've been working on. So currently, if I tap anywhere on the screen, um, we don't go anywhere. Our goal will be that if we tap on any one of these list items, we'll transition to a new screen and it will have the details of this to-do. So we're gonna go ahead and go into our to-do list in App Giver. And while that's coming up, we're gonna go over to Xano for the APIs and database and go into the to-do app there. I am gonna start with the database and just walk us through what we're gonna be doing. Currently, um, we have a good list between IDs one and nine of a number of to-dos. And since we created this table, if you remember, we for free get a list of APIs. So we get all the create, read, update, and delete, or the CRUD APIs for the table we created. We've been working with the get for all to-do records, and we put a filter on that one as well. This time, we're, one, we're gonna wanna use the to-do that has an ID at the end that represents just retrieving one to-do record. So once again, these were all created automatically for us when we created our table. Uh, what this one does is it accepts an integer uh, by the name of ID, and it uses that to, when we click on get record, so get record for the to-do table for the field name that is ID in the table. We're gonna compare that to the field value of the um, passed in input integer that is ID. And when it finds a match to those, then it's gonna return that output, which is what is a part of our table, the ID, the created app, the name and the description. And that gets put in a variable called to do. And then down here in the response, you'll see that we have selected the variable to do as what gets returned in the API. Now also there's a precondition. Uh, the precondition is used to terminate the API call if you didn't get, in this case, a valid, um, if you didn't have a valid ID that matched a record in the table, it is going to return an error message of not found. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run a quick, quick test. And we will start with ID one. If you remember, we have IDs one through nine. So there we go. We're, we know that at this point, the API that was generated for us when we created our table is working. And so we're gonna switch back over to AppGyver and we're gonna go to the data navigation, go back into our to-do data resource. And this is everything that's been set up in the prior few videos. This time we're gonna focus on the get record um, data resource setup. So by default, we get um, all this in AppGyver set up for us when we originally registered the data resource to the Xano API. It's looking for an ID at the end, just like the Xano API has. And it has the URL placeholder defined for us, which is ID. And it is um, not static, which is good. We're passing in a dynamic value from the app, or the user will be. And it is optional. So we're going to go ahead and test now from AppGyver through to Xano and prove that we're getting data out of the database. If you remember, we went with number one. We run the test. And we're getting back the information from our Xano backend. So through the API, pulling data out of the database and passing it back to AppGyver. I'm gonna make sure we've got the right schema set, so I set that. So at this point, we know that we're getting the correct data and we have a valid API call uh, in AppGyver. Now what we need to do is generate a new screen for the detail, as well as make it possible to click on one of these list items and have it pass into the new screen. I'm going to go back out here to our big canvas and we are going to create to do detail. Okay, so just to keep this simple and try to keep within our 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to leave the headline and the paragraph 
and I'm going to associate our data that we get since it's kind of a match for that structure to those. So once again, we have the data resource set up. So let's build from data back up. I need a data variable associated with that data resource. Now we're going to still pick the same data, re data resource we have, which is to do. And we're going to go ahead and rename that detail. And now normally it defaults to collection of data records, and that's what we left when we did the list. But in this case, we want a single data record. We're going to save that. And we're going to need to fill in the ID as well. And that ID is something that needs to be passed to us from the list. So what we need in this case is not a page variable like we've done in the past, but we need a page parameter because a page parameter is something that the opening part of the app, the list, will call into or pass data through, I should say. So we got to do ID is what we're going to call that. And we're going to leave that as text. I'm going to there, there's some tricks here, which is why I hesitate. So I'm going to pick any text, but I think we're going to have to use the uh, trick, which I'll make sure and point out as we get into this. So now I have um, the to-do ID set up. Let's see if we can get everything. Okay, so data variable, to-do detail, and then I want a data and variables to associate with the ID. And this time I'm going to go into page parameter and pick the to-do ID. And so here's where the incompatibility starts. What gets passed to us as a parameter needs to be some sort of text. They don't give number as an option. And since it's an incompatible data type because the ID for the API expects a number, instead of picking data and variables to get past that incompatible error that we just saw, I'm going to go into formula, and you'll see this in the forum for AppGyver. This workaround has been discussed in some level of detail, but we're going to look at page parameters. And if we pick it this way, it's going to let us get past that um, incompatibility of data type error. So it's a bit of a workaround. I know that they're working on a fix for that along with a new client runtime, but this is a very easy way to get around it. Uh, whenever you have incompatible and you need to get access to that data, use the formula instead of the data and variables. Okay, so now I've got single data record. I've got the ID that's passed in. Um, we're going to come back to this delay. Remember, if you will, whenever we set up a data variable associated with the data resource, AppGyver automatically sets up for us the ability to get the record, to set a data variable, to do detail, and then it um, loops every half second by default, um, actually every five seconds by default, and gets the data again. Now on a detail screen, I really don't want it to continue to get the data, because in the, one of the next two videos, we're actually going to do an update, and you don't want somebody to start updating the data and then five seconds later into that replace it with the data from the server um, they'd have to be able to do their update in under five seconds so I think it's important to remove the delay default that gets put in here uh, such that you don't overwrite what somebody's working on okay so now we have that set up we're going to click on the headline we are going to come into the data and variables and we are going to go to the data variable, to do detail, and we are going to pick the name. And then we're going to click on the paragraph, and we're going to do the exact same thing, data variable, uh, and then we're going to pick the description. OK. And we don't do the repeat with because this is for a singular data record. OK. So at this point, I have set up the detail screen with the parameter, with the association of data variable to data resource, and then I've connected the title and the description to those data elements within that data variable. 
So let's switch back over to our to-do list and click on the list. And now what we're gonna wanna set up is an open page. So the goal is when I click on an item in the list, we want to do an open page. So component tap, open page. When I click on the open page, you'll see that since the only other page option is to do detail, it's selected it for us. And we have the to-do ID. The reason the to-do ID shows up here is that we have picked the to-do detail page and it has a parameter defined on it, a page parameter. And so that page parameter shows up here. And what we are going to do is pick the property of a data item in repeat like we've done in the past, the current item, and the ID. So we've got our same incompatibility issue here. If you notice, incompatible, um, because we're going from number to text. But just like we did before, we are gonna pick formula, and we're gonna create a formula that picks the current, currently repeated data item and the ID. And at this point, that almost seems too fast, doesn't it? Let's see what happens. Okay, have I done all my saving? I have, my save is done. So I should be able to come over here and click. Okay there, mow the yard. We automatically get our to-do list back arrow at the top, I click on that. Wash the dog, go to the groomers. So at this point we've actually created, uh, very simply, I shouldn't act surprised that it all worked pretty straightforward this time, but um, one thing I'll do while we're in here, not sure what time limit I'm at, but I would kind of like to show what it looks like if you don't want to rely on the um, back arrow that they give you by default and you want to give them a close button. That's a pretty straightforward effort. You just drag and drop the button onto the page. Let's go into the label and say close. And then on the component tap, we're gonna pick the navigate back. And like I said, this isn't necessary, but I figure you just as well know that navigate back is there. And by default, it's going to know what to navigate back to, because whenever you open a new page, it puts it on the page stack. So this is sitting on the top, and I'm saying kick this one off the top and go to the one that was before it, which happens to be the list. Let's test our luck here and see if We've got that working. Mow the yard, close. There you go. Walk the dog, close. Now, once again, we'll probably do an effort where we clean up this to-do detail screen. We're probably gonna do that clean up here in the next video in conjunction with doing an edit. So the goal will be we'll give an edit option that allows you to change the name of the to-do as well as the description. And we probably need to add something that allows you to say that the to-do is done. Otherwise, it's just a list and not a to-do list. Thanks again for watching.